everybody it's Amy at Crafty Cat uh, we're gonna make a little this little envelope thingy <laughs> I don't know I just got playing with an envelope I'm actually I was actually inspired by Gail and her um, waterfall one that she made yesterday or the day before I'm not sure anyway um, so I just got playing with an envelope and this is entirely different than what she did but she just got me playing around with envelopes so anyway this is one envelope and this is what the end result will be to um, you know put on a page like this and my envelope is starting at nine and a quarter by four and an eighth so that's the size of the envelope that I'm using um, and but you can use whatever size envelope works for your page and it's just one envelope so what I did I'll show you the steps first and then we will um, deal with that. I feel like this is crooked. It, it could be, or maybe it's just that, I don't know, whatever. Um, so nine and a quarter by four and an eighth. And I cut it first at six and a half. So I just took my envelope and I measured to six and a half and I cut that piece off. And I'm turning it over this way. So this is a little pocket and then I'm going to cut just a tiny slit off the top just to open up that envelope I'm not cutting off a lot at all so that just cuts that off if I can get a hold of it so that now um, this opens at the top okay set that aside and then I'm taking the piece that's cut at six and a half and I'm going to cut one inch off of actually I'm turning it over Make sure you turn it over <laughs> because you're going to fold it like this and this becomes a pocket so you don't want to cut you don't want to cut the flap off down here because that'll mess up your pocket down here. So I'm cutting it off of this top portion up here instead. So I'm cutting one inch off of that. And I know I'm going to cut the flap but that really doesn't matter so that makes no difference whatsoever. I can just toss that and I'm keeping that flap don't throw that away keep that because we're going to do something with that in a minute and I don't need my cutter now I do need some glue so the flap or the part that was your flap you're just going to glue it down on this upper portion up here and you can go down this side a little bit don't glue this part here because that's going to be a pocket okay so you're just gluing this top part down so I'm just putting glue right here and over here that's it I'm gluing that down and then I'm going to fold it over I can't remember what it was I gotta look at this for a second uh, two and a half inches is what this fold over is and it doesn't you know if you're not exact don't like stress about it it's just about two and a half inch fold is what I did and I really want to give that a good crease so hopefully it will eventually lay flat and this down here is not wanting to be flat either because once you fold it it changes all the directions of the paper all right, so that's what I have so far. And then this piece, no, oh, that one stays. Yeah, that one stays, sorry. This piece over here, there's these little flaps right here, and I'm just going to fold them down. And they don't have to meet up to anything. They're just going to kind of fold over like that. They're not touching this one. They're just, you know, kind of going at a, a right angle to make a triangle right here. And then I'm going to cut off this back portion right here. So right along that fold, I'm just going to cut this off because I don't need it. Right, and then this will slide into this flap. This is part of the envelope, original envelope flap. And you're going to kind of meet up with this line right here. You know, this line is just kind of continuing all the way up like that, roughly. It can come in a tiny bit more, but... 
you can't really when you fold that over like that I got to make sure that's gonna fit my page so I know the one I made before will fit my page so don't like glue anything together until you know that it's gonna fit your page the way you want it to because um, you know that won't be good if you make it all and then it doesn't fit your page I, I want it to this is an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper that I've just folded in half and I'm starting a new journal so this will be the size of my pages I just like to do that have a whole sheet and fold it in half so basically what I'm trying to do is um, get it so that this fits nice within that page to go all the way across the bottom of the page okay like that and then this extra flap that you have you're going to eventually like after I collage it and stuff I'm going to glue this one on just the bottom I still want to be able to get into these pockets here but just a little you know kind of across the bottom and then it'll be another little pocket so I hope that's clear <laughs> hopefully if you watch it again you know it, it'll become more clear so that's just the part of the envelope that we cut the one inch off of fold it down this side cut this one off it fits in here and you can glue this flap down which is what I'm going to do so that you can slide it a little bit further in depending on what you need for the you know size of your page so let me put this on here so if you're going to do a smaller journal or whatever you might want to use a smaller envelope And I can cover this over with, you know, paper, collage paper, whatever. This is just my base. And then this way I can fit it, you know, a little bit snugger in there, or I can come out a little bit further depending on the width of my page. So I want mine about there. But I'm not going to worry about gluing this together just yet because I want to collage it first. If I, if I glue it all together, then that makes collaging it really hard so let's do that real quick I hope you guys are all having an awesome day sorry I just like jumped right in but I just wanted to get you know the basis of this down before I started um, just chit chatting or whatever so yeah I hope you're having an awesome day I hope you had an awesome weekend I had a pretty nice one um, this doesn't have it on there okay so this is medieval mirage illuminated flora uh, medieval inspired illuminated flora is this one and I'm not sure she has on here I don't know which one I have but I'll put it in the description box below the number on it the volume and all that because um, just like before you know there's she has like volumes one two that kind of thing so um, yeah, but that's anyway, it's from Medieval Mirage. But, you know, you can use any paper you have, any background paper that you want to use. I'm doing more of a Valentine's theme because I am um, going to be making a Valentine's journal. So, with all that said, um, yeah, so that's the new one I'm working on. I was going to do a... Um, custom order first but I asked her if I could wait until I get this uh, Valentine's journal done obviously with Valentine's Day we have a bit of a time you know limit so I just want to make sure if someone wants to get this one as a gift or whatever for Valentine's Day that they they have it so and she was super kind and said that that was fine so I'm just gonna do this and tear that off I don't want people to, you know, I don't want to make it after Valentine's Day or, you know, right at Valentine's Day and then that's no fun for somebody if they're trying to give a gift. That goes right there. And you don't have to even have the paper come all the way in, obviously, because it's, um, that part's going to get covered, but I'm just putting this piece on there. What did I do with my, oh my goodness. See, I had it over there and then I move it over and then I'm lost. <laughs> because of my tunnel vision that I get when I'm doing this stuff. <laughs> and it's really bad when I'm on camera. I don't seem to be quite as 
dingy when I'm, um, you know, doing it on my own. But for some reason, with the camera on, I feel like I can't ever see anything that's, like, right in front of me. It's kind of weird. I think it's just that. I mean, I don't really feel nervous anymore, but I guess you just still kind of get a little bit worried about it or something. But you guys are all awesome, so I don't have anything to worry about, I don't think. I'm going to cut a little thumb notch in that with my burner rounder if I can get a hold of it. It's all buried in all my rulers here. I just have a big um, basket thing that I put all that stuff in. Oh, of course, like the street sweeper has to go by right now and make loads of noise because why not? It's kind of like every time I do a video in the summer, they're mowing the lawn. The problem is this. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a very good corner in here. I'll just try to do kind of a side deal. I just want a little bit of something there so you know that that's a pocket. Right there. Probably should have waited till after I covered it, right? But yeah, Gail got me all inspired to play with envelopes. I was thinking that waterfall one that she did, and I may still do that, um, something like that on its side is what got me started on this, making these. So It's funny how just something like that gets you, gets you thinking, even if you do something entirely different. That's why I love watching other people do stuff, though, because... You know, we all think differently, and just one little thing can, like, spark that creativity. And it may end up being totally something else, but um, it's just funny how that works. Which is why I watch, because I just, you know, it helps the creative juices to get going. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry if you can hear that thing. It's crazy figures. That piece. I love those roses on that. That seems very Valentine's-ish to me. And then I'm going to use some of my Digi, my um, old love notes. I like this music piece right here. That would be kind of a good one to use somewhere. Yeah. It has gotten cold old here. I mean, I know probably not, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm holding that entirely wrong. Um, not as cold as most places, but we just really have, like I keep saying, I know I've said it a hundred times, but, um, we just have not had a cold winter for us and it's just been too warm like it snows and then it melts and all that jazz so um but it, uh, it's cold it was cold a couple days last week too and then it warmed up again so it's probably what it'll do it's just doing that weird like up and down thing this needs to be straighter and i need i want this little stitch on here so i think i'm gonna tear it over here And I'm just going to put a little divot in that and hope I get close to the other one. Not really, but I had a subscriber or somebody ask why nobody measures anymore. And I really don't know. It just... Um, I know for myself, it's just a lazy thing, truly, to be honest. I I don't know, because it would probably save a lot of time, but for some reason I just get going, and I just don't feel like measuring everything. And um, I don't know if it's the same for other people that do this stuff or what, but it's probably very aggravating when you watch people do this stuff. But I don't know, I just don't measure a lot. There we go. So I'm sorry if it drives you crazy. I 
I just get going and it's not even really a conscious thing. And I don't really like anything that has to do with math. <laughs> that could be part of it. It's kind of like a uh, aversion or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I can see how it would be annoying. <laughs> bad memories, bad memories. I've always been horrible at math. And I feel very happy because my kids don't have that problem. Thank goodness, because it is a problem. I mean, it really is a problem. And it does have an effect. You know, you think, oh, I don't need, what do I need math for? What do I need that for? Or whatever. But it's funny, you know, you do need all that. And so that's why I always tell my kids, I'm like, you don't want to be like me and just be stinky at all that stuff. I'm going to use that lace. So, yeah. Very happy that they don't stink at it. I think the biggest problem is, um, I mean, I'm just probably not that kind of person. My brain doesn't necessarily work that way. But also, I was raised um, in the middle of that quote-unquote new math or whatever the heck. And I just feel like that just screwed up a lot of stuff because I know a lot of people who are older than I am that are very good at math. And it seems like a lot of people in my generation are not. And I just feel like we kind of got gypped on that whole deal. I could be wrong. I mean, I have no idea. I'm not like a math expert or something, but I just feel like people used to be a lot better at it. And that's not to say that people my age aren't good at it, all of them. I'm just saying, like, I know more people who struggle with it my age than, you know, the older generation. I had friends that were really good at math and stuff. They didn't have a problem, but I think part of it is this stuff's tricky to measure as well <laughs> inside the envelope, right? And I want to make sure that doesn't get stuck, so I'm going to, um, where's my, my bone folder? I'm just going to kind of stick it in that corner until that dries. And what do we want to put on the little slanty part there? Put some medieval mirage or a piece of this. The writing maybe. Some roses from medieval mirage maybe. More roses, different roses. Yes, we're going to have lots of roses. I'll take that other piece off too. Up there. Yeah, the little kids today kept telling me, oh, that was smart. I should have gone all the way up to the corner. Well, I could put something else on there. Um, I'm cold. I'm cold. It's like, I know, I'm sorry. It's cold out here. And when we were out at recess duty, they were freezing. Wow, that was a really poor job, Amy. Just 
but yeah, I felt bad for them because they're so tiny, you know, these little guys, and they were, it was cold out there. I mean, if it's too cold, we obviously don't go out, but it doesn't have to be too awful before they're freezing their little hineys off. Oh my goodness, how many times is that thing going to go by? Ridiculous. And then I'm going to put something else down the side, like, let's see, some music would be good. Here's a piece of music that Denise sent. Or another thing that would be good is, um, like some text out of this typing book that Samantha sent me. Thank you, thank you. And this is just, you know, part of that typing book. Just put a little bit of it here. Um, I guess I'll just do it like that. Piece of work. Okay, and then this piece, see it'll slide in like that, roughly, so except it can come all the way out to there. So I need to decorate that one. And I think I will use another bit of this, because that was, that's a fun, I like that. Let's do... be a little more precise here. Not a lot, but a little. <laughs> so I know I've said it a million times, but I think my daughter has finally decided to go to BSU. <laughs> I mean, we that's originally what I said, but then she was going back and forth about another college closer to us, and yeah, so, but I think she's she just really wants to do Blue Thunder, so, I mean, she'll have to audition and stuff, so it's not a guarantee, but that's what she wants to try for. And so that's a good thing for her to have made some decision, because she was struggling with decision-making, as you understand. She still is not sure what she wants to major in, but, you know, she can go in undecided for now. It's fine. I just told her she can't stay undecided forever. <laughs> can't go to school forever because I can't afford it. I'm hoping for some scholarships to help out with that. She got the one for the other school, but... Um, it just really doesn't have what she wants to do. I mean, even even though she doesn't know exactly what she wants to do, she has kind of some idea of, you know, what she wants to go into, and they just don't have what she wants. So, unfortunately, because that would have been very helpful. But my Tim Holtz. Um, flowers. I'd like to find a smaller rose, but I don't know if I'm going to find a smaller rose. They all seem to be pretty big. Hmm. Oh, this one's not too huge. So 
like how to put it. <laughs> I guess I could snip off a few of those little spots. That wouldn't be awful. I love these flowers. And butterflies. I can get a hold of it. It's kind of sad to snip that off, but just isn't going to fit great otherwise. So, is what it is. Let's see what else do we want to put on there. Could get more of this since it's look weird with that rose. No. I like this part up here better. Looks more faded and old. So this uh, goes to show because there's, I'm also going to be using um, Medieval Mirage. This one, which is the Medieval Missives add-on part three, which I used in the last journal, but you can see how different these images are compared to, um, you know, what we used for the winter journal. So that's kind of neat within the same, you know, digi. So um, it's just kind of a neat thing with her digitals. They're very large and... Um, So there's a lot that you can do with them. And I said extensive, extensive <laughs> in a video and I realized it kind of like sounded like I said her digitals were expensive, but um, for as much as is in them, they definitely are not expensive. I just, I said extensive, but I realized later it probably sounded like I said expensive and I did not mean that at all. Because I think for as much as you get in them, they are not bad. this was kind of a fun little envelope pocket to make and I know everybody likes envelopes using envelopes up and stuff so this is kind of a good one hopefully you guys got what I was showing you <laughs> it's always hard to explain things and I just hope that people understand what you're talking about Actually, if I do it like that, I only have to trim off a tiny bit, so that's not bad. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'm going to ink around this. I just realized I didn't ink this envelope at all. And I'm going to use the liquid glue on the roses. So they hopefully stay where they're supposed to be. I have to go all the way to the tip there. away from me. Okay, so now we have to figure out how we want to put this together. It needs to go this way. And I need my page that I folded just to make sure I'm getting the right size here. I 
And I don't think I'm going to do any stitching just because um, there's so many different angles and stuff to this that I don't want to accidentally stitch something closed. What did I do with that other little piece? Oh. So now we need to figure out how much of this we need. Oh, you know what? I'm going to cover that up if I do that. Duh! I should not have put that flower there. <laughs> I wonder if I can get it off. Uh -uh. It's not going to come off. So maybe I'm just going to leave it like this because I don't want to. But if you, you know, think ahead and be smarter than me. <laughs> and then you can add that and you can have another little spot to tuck things into. Like that. I could go partially. Do I want to do that? Hmm. I think for this one I'm going to leave that off. But you do it, if you want it on the bottom, just remember that when you're collaging so that you don't end up um, doing what I did. Alright, so we have this pocket and I need to glue down this part that's open so that it can open all the way. I did when I closed that. So be careful when you close that too that you don't um, seal that part itself because then you won't have the pocket. So maybe don't seal anything until you, you know, get it mostly done. I mean I got that. It's it's fine that um, tags and whatever will still fit down in there but I didn't finish one of these. I just sort of cut it apart and figured out how I wanted it and then didn't go all the way through the process. So maybe don't seal anything until you're gluing it all together for the final for the final time. And then you're just going to run a bead down this side. Like that. Cuz this is open all the way down, so you don't want to close that up. Did not want to close. Now it doesn't want to glue shut. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> okay, because you want to make sure you can fit this in so you don't want to glue that other one down. And I think I can go right to that point and match those two up like that and it'll fit on my page. But again, like I said, it's going to depend on your page and what size you're cutting your pages. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue right down here to glue that down. I'm going just a tiny bit in. That's going to fit right barely, so I'm going to scooch it in just a tiny bit more. I just don't want my book to um, not be able to open and close properly because of that, you know what I mean? So I want to leave a little bit of room over there. So we're going to actually put a little more glue since I moved it a million times. Okay, so you're just gluing those together and then this one is just that opening. Which that one's opening all the way right. Oh. Yeah, don't glue down that back flap at all until you're you figure out where. I wasn't thinking on that. And then I'm just gonna do a thin bead like that to hold that one closed. I hope this is clear for everybody. If it's not, let me know and I'll do it again. So now I kind of have one whole piece. And I'm going to glue that onto my page and I'm going to come closest to the opening side. I'm going to move it, you know, so it's closest to there. But I'm just going to put glue on the three 
edges like that because I don't want um, my pockets to get glued together. And also this way I can have a really big pocket at the back. If you can put glue on without shaking like me. <laughs> I haven't had coffee for hours either. Alright, so we're going to come all the way to that edge of that paper. Because like I said, I want to leave more room for my binding, obviously, than the other side. Oops, that's crooked. Once you slide those envelopes into each other, they are um, not perfectly straight anymore, so keep that in mind. Alright, so now basically what you have, hopefully this is probably as clear as mud, but hopefully it'll become clearer. So like I just have one of my vinegar valentines, it could go back there in the very, that's the very, very back. And then this pocket right here, and I haven't backed any of these tags, I will back all of them so they're more sturdy. I can put this tag, and then in this one, I can put a skinny tag, it has to be kind of skinny to fit in there. And let's see. Um, I'm just trying to think of what I want where. Uh, Slide one of these in here. Those are from Medieval Mirage, Medieval Missives, add on part three. That's part of that. I can slide this little cherub in here. And that's from my Digi Old Love Notes. And then you could have like some little people, of, you know, Tim Holtz people, just stuck in that pocket. And what else could I tuck? I have this little medieval mirage that can tuck into there. So you've got pockets everywhere. There's, you know, little tuck spots and pockets and whatnot. These, this could go back behind these girls. There. So yeah. So, there, so it's kind of like a spread out other direction loaded pocket, if that makes any sense. <laughs> These are coins that are um, in Medieval Mirage, Medieval Missives, add-on part three. So that can go there. She could even go in here. So you could just load it up because there's like lots of little tuck spots and pockets and things like that. So see that worked out fine. That one goes right in there and she goes right in here. So yeah. I think that's kind of fun. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you think that was really confusing, I hope not. But um, let me know. And like I said, I'll, I'll do it again. So basically what I want to say is, here's the one that we didn't decorate yet. Um, don't seal it until you... Let's see, that one's opening fine. It must have just been that one when I sealed that envelope, it got stuck or something because this one I did glue down the top of that flap and yeah it's fine I don't know but anyway so you cut it at six and a half the piece that is longest you're going to cut an inch off the top fold the loose flap down not the one that is still sealed this edge is still sealed um, fold that over and then this one will have to be glued because this flap didn't get glued. I just glued part of it. And then um, cut off that back flap. Fold this over two and what did I say? Almost two and a half. It's almost two and a half inches. And then you have your longer piece still left over. You're just sliding that into that like that. So, and then if you want to, Remember, before you finish, um, like collaging, you could put this strip on, cut it off over here, and then this would be a good spot to put like little, little pieces, like maybe some of these or something. You know, things like that, that are smaller, could tuck in there. Or you can leave it off and just do this part. So, totally up to you, but I just thought that that might be a fun little loaded envelope 
sideways pocket. <laughs> I don't know what I'll call it, but I'll try to think of something better than that for the name of the video. But anyway, that is it. I don't know if anybody's done one of these. I have no idea. It's, it's very possible because I kind of feel like we've done it all, but you just never know. So um, I just haven't seen it because I was just playing around. But anyway, I will talk to you guys later. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. And I want to thank all of you. Um, you've all been just super kind and nice, and I I mean, I can't tell you how much that means to me, because it is hard to put yourself out there and, um, you know, put your art out to basically anybody who would watch it. So I just thank you for um, being so kind. So have a wonderful evening, and we'll chat again soon. Bye-bye now.